Hey YouTubers, I'm here on this segment and I wanted to uh, share with you um, about my recent purchase from Micro Center. Um, you're looking at the clocks. Um, after I had it um, set to 4.44 gigahertz, I realized um, on a bulldozer 8-core, 8120, may not seem as much. Uh, many of you just sit there scratching your heads like, why did he got the 8120? It's real simple. I, I, I know, I know for sure that the bulldozer architecture um, is not that great. They haven't corrected the bugs from there, so it's still in its early stages. Uh, I did some heavy encoding and benchmarks on this, and I've realized one thing. When it comes to pushing itself really hard, this thing performs great. That's one thing I could tell you. In games, depending on the settings on your graphics, whether it to be in Radeon or Nvidia, you could notice the percentage going a little above three or four or 500 megahertz faster than a Phenom 2 1090. I did um, regular benchmarks without it being overclocked and found that the Phenom 2 X6 beats it in certain applications. Um, if you're wondering where are the pictures to uh, support my theory or if I have any evidence proving that, I can show you a little further. The clocks, if you look at it real good, you can see that it's clocked pretty much to 4.30. And got the north and south bridge clocked and everything is running fine and it's fluctuating just nicely can't see the numbers too good but um on the system temperature is 35 that's good cpu temperatures is 39 well oh, the 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 lesser that it gets cooler to to is to 38 celsius it'll normally it would run from 44 45 celsius on just certain um um certain threads that it uses to keep it clocked a certain way um i've used programs like the nero vision to will help me encode it i push the cpu to its limit it it goes all the way to 60 celsius and 61 happens to be the the highest and after that it's um, out of the um, normal so I really did some pushing on this um, CPU and found that it's stable this is the most I could get out of it with the north and south bridge being clocked higher the memory and the CPU so overall it's not a it's not a bad purchase I just did it to do some testing on the CPU and so far it's good it still um, lacks the normal catch and the instructions within the die that they, they it looks like they haven't finished um, developing any means and tools to use the a core bulldozer chip correctly so the paradigm C CMTs are off That'll get corrected with the BIOS updates as it comes by. Uh, also, I, I, I also I wanted to point out that if you do happens to have a 990FX chipset, depending if it's an ASUS, you might be in luck. If 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 it's Gigabit, it all depends. If if you have newer revisions of the board then it, that, that'll be fine, that, that'll be just fine. For the ones who have the first versions of the UD3 Gigabit 990FXA UD, um, it has its bugs. It has its bugs within the new BIOS, and I noticed that when I tried to play my games with both of my 
graphic cards enabled it kind of does show that it's enabled but at the same time it doesn't show the logo crossfire so that's another problem they need to correct also when I go to the UIFE BIOS I stay there no more than a minute or two or three minutes it it heats up your system and it heats up your CPU and um, it basically shuts it down for a while that's another bug within the system BIOS other than that I I toyed with it a little more and pushed as much as I could push out of a 8120 and got this thing clocked from a normal 3.1 to a superb 4.3 uh, gigahertz with the north bridge and south bridge and the memory and the CPU clocked from the system front system um, bus so I, I, I tweaked it as much as I could and all I can squeeze out of it it's 4.3 not bad for air cooling that's not bad I do suggest if you're gonna use liquid um, liquid cooling or water cooling make sure one you know what you're doing and two make sure you know what you want for your system for overclocking but overall this is a major improvement in the bigger clock speeds than a Phantom 2 X6 if some of you are disagreeing with this concept you can always write to me or email me uh, I can't give the email out <laughs> uh, I, I would say I would say rather just uh, send me a message from YouTube and I'll do my best to reply to you as soon as I can okay so before I do anything and before I sign off I wanted to show you the bulldozer as I have it here. Not bad for a packaging, it's really sleek. I don't have the chip on me right now, it's inside the um, computer. Um, and the sticker too, I have it in the front. As you can see, there's the label right here. FX and Phantoms, those are the processors I take. My backup in case the other chips fail, it's the Anthelon. Um, wanted to show you the threads as well. So I can show you that it's an 8 core. Although some of you might think um, it's not really mine, it's someone else's. This is actually my system. I built this system from scratch. But I also wanted to show you how many threads you could read there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Overall, uh, one to ten, I give this CPU a 7.0, roughly a 7.0. I should give it a lower um, score for that, but I'm going to give it a 7.0, a strong 7.0 because the overclocking um, it's beneficial and it should help the system fluctuate better okay so you've been watching my segment thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next post and fellas make sure you keep in tune as I will um, update you later on the upcoming uh, CPU codename Vichera <laughs>